नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टीज स्पेशल लाइव फोन इन प्रोग्राम माई नेम इज तनवी खुराना एंड यू वॉचिंग आज ऑन ई विद्या चैनल नंबर सिक्स टू चैनल नंबर ट्वेल्व टूडे वी आर हियर एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टेल यू सर्टन डिटेल्स अबाउट एन सी आर टी पॉलिसी ऑन प्रिवेंशन प्रोहिबिशन एंड रिड्रेसल ऑफ सेक्शुअल हेरसमेंट ऑफ वीमेन एट वर्क प्लेस विच इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक नो मैटर वेर यू वर्किंग दिस टॉपिक इज रियली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू वेल वी से दैट वर्क इज वर्शिप एंड वर्शिप इज अ प्लेस ऑफ एंड वर्क प्लेस इज अ प्लेस ऑफ वर्शिप राइट सो लेट मी टेल यू इज इट फाइन टू से दैट सेफ्टी इज ओनली फॉर मैन नो इट इज नॉट फॉर ऑल बी इट अ मैन और अ वीमेन सेफ्टी इज इम्पॉर्टेंट do women have the right to stay safe at the workplace the answer is yes and in this era the government of india is making all efforts possible to ensure that uh, women feel safe secure and they have equality so ncert stands committed to ensure gender inclusive safe and enabling environment for its employees not just for employees but students as well in consonance with this NCRT has a policy on prevention, prohibition and redressal of sexual harassment of women at workplace. And in this particular program we are going to discuss all the details all the minute details, the salient features of this policy. We have a very special guest in our studio. Let me please introduce to you Professor Anupam Ahuja. A very warm welcome to you ma'am. Thank you. Uh, namaskar, namaskar to everybody. Let me please introduce ma'am to all of you. Uh, she is Professor Anupam Ahuja. Like I said, she has been superannuated on 30th of uh, November after having an illustrious career spanning 36 years, where she worked in the council. She headed two departments. Well, not just one, two. One was the Department of Education of Groups with Special Needs, and the other was the International Relations Division. Not just this, she has also been the chairperson of National Institute of Education's. Committee against sexual harassment, and we call it NIE Cash. She is known for her contributions not just nationally but internationally for promoting inclusive education. So I have a lot to ask her, and let me just begin uh, with my very first question, ma'am. Yes. What is the focus of our today's program? What is the outline? What are we going to discuss? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Tanvi, for. Uh, asking me this question and it takes me forward from what you have just said uh, we are going to talk about the ncert's policy on prevention prohibition and redressal of sexual harassment of women at workplace and as you've said it's very important that we understand this because we need to have safe environments for everybody now today what am i going to tell you i'm going to give you uh, a, a background about uh, this policy i'm also going to tell you which actions amount to sexual harassment it's important to understand that as well you know right. and also uh, you know more details in terms of who inquires into certain complaints that may come then uh, we also need to know that when a complaint comes and it's looked into obviously the person will face some penalties mm -hmm. so what kind of penalties can be imposed that's something that i'm going to also talk about and finally when we talk about penalties we also need to know any penalty who will award it to the person who is guilty so this in a nutshell is to make you aware of the the viewers aware about this policy and these nitigities that i just talked about absolutely so ma'am let's just begin with the background could you please Uh, give us a background on the ncert policy on prevention yes. prohibition and redressal of sexual harassment yes today. sure i i think it's important that before we come to the policy we look at it how it really came into being and what's the background yeah. well it takes me to 1990s you know the rajasthan state government had an employee whose name was uh, bhanwari devi and you know this lady at that time uh, wanted to prevent child marriage and this she thought was as a part of her duty now when she was doing this unfortunately she was raped by the landlords of the community now bhavri devi a rape survivor did not get justice from the rajasthan high court and the rapists were allowed to go free 
Now, this was noticed by a women's right group, rights group called Vishakha. And they filed a public interest litigation in the Supreme Court. As we went down, uh, uh, if, as I go down the memory lane and give you uh, uh, dates, in 1997, the court first time acknowledged sexual harassment of women at workplace and they passed a landmark judgment laying down guidelines to be followed by all establishments in dealing with complaints about sexual harassment at workplace. An extension of this Vishakha guidelines, the sexual harassment of women at workplace, Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act was enacted in 2013. So these are some landmarks and this act provides the legal framework for prevention of harassment of women at workplace. It's legal. It's not just something that, you know, one can do one day and not take up. It's an act and it has legal repercussions. In compliance of these Vishakha guidelines and the 2000 Act that I just talked about, mm -hmm. NCRT formulated its policy on, we have talked about this, we have named it on prevention, prohibition and redress of sexual harassment of women at workplace. Now, this policy of the NCRT is applicable to all complaints of sexual harassment. Okay. And this is at NIE and its constituent units. We all know that we have our arms in the form of the RIs and the five are, uh, RIs are our constituent units and so is the Vocational Institute, PICIF and CIT. They all, for all these units, that is the NI and its constituent units, uh, this policy is applicable to all complaints that may come to us provided the act that is the sexual harassment takes place at the workplace. By workplace, uh, we understand that within the premise of the building or the campus. Yes, that's right. So if it happens outside those premises, this uh, policy does not apply. Okay. So that's important for us to understand. And right at the outset, you had said it's meant for teachers and students. Mm. Now you see, with our RIs, mm. we have students who are engaged in pre-service training. So this policy applies to them as well they can also uh, be uh, made aware about this and if they are in trouble, they can also approach us. So it's for the members of uh, these units that I've just talked about, the NIE and the constituent units of NCRT and the, both the employees, the women employees and the students as well. Okay, okay. So uh, now that we have a little background about this policy, I think uh, the picture is a lot clearer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's uh, go further and ma'am, uh, for the information of not just women, but for men as well, could you please tell us which actions can we say uh, they are amount to sexual harassment? So basically we can say what are the don'ts? Absolutely. I mean, you know, when you talk about sexual harassment, uh, it's very important that we understand that you can't just say it's Monday morning and somebody has looked at me, I, I am putting a complaint. No, there are certain very clear cut demarcations in, in the policy which amount to sexual harassment. Okay. So you cannot just do it in a frivolous way. You cannot just uh, overreact, uh, you know, or be emotional about it mm -hmm. and have, uh, you know, an outlet. No, you have to understand that the the following actions that I'm going to now share with you only amount to sexual harassment. And this is uh, important when we approach uh, us, you know, someone saying that I have been abused and I have, uh, you need to look into it or you put it down in writing or you speak verbally. You need to know that a sexual harassment uh, is, it will be considered a sexual harassment only if there is physical contact and advances. That's one, okay? Then, if there is a demand or a request for any sexual favor that 
somebody seeks, that can also amount to a sexual harassment. So I repeat, a physical contact or some advances, they come under this. Or if somebody makes a demand or a request for a sexual favor, that can be considered to be an act that amounts to sexual harassment. Sometimes uh, we also come across uh, instances when there is sexually colored remarks that are being made. Like? Which could be ranging from, um, I just like the way you walk, you know, you, you, the movement of your, uh, you know, pelvis or your uh, bust line or something as, you know, uh, I just get excited. Yeah, if you, somebody makes any sexually colored remarks like that, pointing to a woman's, uh, you know, body and it, it hurts uh, the sentiments of uh, the common man mm -hmm. and is not appropriate. Mm -hmm. So again, the committee will evaluate whether it is something that's been, uh, that comes under this category. But as I said, something that's not done usually, you know, and is, has an element of a uh, colored remark in it, that can be considered to be an act of sexual harassment. Simply showing pornography to a, a lady, you know, bringing it uh, with you and just uh, turning pages and showing, that is also considered to be an act of sexual harassment. Okay. Uh, any other unwelcoming physical, verbal or non-verbal conduct of sexual nature is considered to be also uh, amounting to sexual harassment. So you see these five things that I've mentioned to you, uh, if it falls under this category, then it can, can be considered to be an act that needs to be looked into and uh, there is a committee that does that and there is a process that is followed. So anyone who feels uh, that uh, something of this nature has come to their notice and they are being repeatedly or even once or twice, I mean, we always say, let's nip uh, it in the bud. Let's not wait for it to become an atom bomb you know, and explode. It should be tackled uh, in a very uh, quick and uh, with this committee's uh, uh, presence, it's done very appropriately, looked into also. So one of the things that I also want to tell everybody is that we should uh, not hold it. We should not say, if I go, what would happen? You know, will I be uh, considered to be ostracized? Would I be picked as a person who is different? please don't have these inhibitions. Anything that you think amounts to what I've just shared with you, it, if, if you have any such doubt, please approach us. That's another message that's very, very important for us to understand this and also to remember that we are just uh, 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 next door for you to take this up in, and look into it. And the guilty should be uh, punished. punished and taken to task. You know. So this, I hope, now clarifies yes. what you said, what amounts to sexual harassment. Absolutely. So, ma'am, you said uh, that anyone facing uh, these um, you know, problems, sexual yes. harassment problems, and uh, let's say a woman comes up uh, and makes a complaint. So who inquires into the complaint? Yeah. Who are the people authorized to go through those private complaints? Excellent. Very important question, and I think uh, we need to... Uh, understand that this has also been laid down very clearly. You mentioned right at the outset cash. Hmm. Now, don't read it as CASH money. No, it is a committee. C stands for a committee against sexual harassment. Hmm. That's the acronym. If I was to expand it, the NI committee against sexual harassment, that's NI cash, has the jurisdiction of complaints at NIE headquarters CIT and those referred by RIEs and PISIF. So this committee looks into these complaints and it's also very important that this inquiry into complaints is done there and then. You don't have to come always to, you know, NI for it. In, at the region, there are regional committees in our regional colleges 
also against sexual harassment that exists. They are they carry the acronym RIE CASH. So they have their jurisdiction of complaints at respective RIs and PISEF. So these, this, they, these two committees uh, inquire into the complaints in detail and look at them uh, in a very, uh, it's, it's like almost, uh, you know, uh, it has the powers of uh, any uh, legal uh, binding on, uh, as I said, it's, a, it's got a legal binding and the committee has powers to summon any official paper or document, defendant complaint from the complaint, complainant or a witness. So it is done in a very uh, systematic manner and with a sense of purpose, you know, and the committee shall be deemed as an inquiry authority. And this is under the central civil service rules that we operate. So the, this is important for you to know that if it is within NI, you can approach at the NI headquarters and put in a, your, and if you are at NI, uh, RIs, you don't have to uh, you know, wait, you can just approach your RI cash as well. Okay. So that's where the inquiry into the complaints goes. Okay. So now where, uh, that we know about these two committees, ma'am, would you like to tell us who are the committee members and also uh, that these complaints, is it any rule, there is any restriction that uh, these complaints need to be private? Well, uh, we ensure that when it comes to us, uh, we don't disclose it. Okay. So it, uh, secrecy is totally confidential okay. and uh, no names are ever taken, mm -hmm. no cases are ever discussed. When you asked me right at the outset, give me an example, mm -hmm. that was also just, you know, something that I picked out from somewhere else. It has nothing to do with what I have done, what I have got in the last five years. It just stays within each one of us, mm -hmm. the members, we never disclose any details uh, regarding the same to anybody, you know. So what is uh, the composition of the committee? Well, the composition of the committee consists of eight members and uh, it, these eight members, there are, uh, you know, uh, there is a chairperson uh, who is always a woman, okay. okay. And there are three academic staff members, two non-academic staff members and one woman or man uh, with known contributions to women's issues is nominated by the director and he's a director NCRT and is from outside the NCRT. This is regarding the NI committee uh, against sexual harassment and in the regional uh, committees against sexual harassment, that's the RI cash that I talked about, there are six members. Uh, in this committee. Again, there is a chairperson who is a, a woman and two academic staff members, at least one again is a woman and two non-teaching staff members and one woman with known contributions to women issues from outside RI. Okay. So you see how it is very well knit uh, in terms of having people with the required experience and there are people who are, uh, you know, who represent academia and outside as well. Hmm. So this is very consciously done and is very uh, appropriate for looking into these cases. Okay. All right. So now that we are even aware who are the committee members, ma'am, would you uh, please list out the penalties? What are the penalties that can be imposed on the person if they found guilty? And uh, how many kinds of penalties are there in the committee? Yeah. That's again, uh, it depends upon uh, the uh, committee's decision, okay. finally, that, that goes without saying and the committee uh, leaves no stone unturned uh, to look into the, uh, the cases in a very detailed manner, but the committee can recommend any of the following actions. Let me uh, share them with you. One is you could just give a warning okay. to whoever is the uh, found guilty, you can give a, a, a warning, you can give a written apology uh, uh, and a bond of good, you know, the person who uh, the committee can recommend that a written apology be taken. Mm -hmm. Then you could also, uh, a bond of good behavior hmm. can be also demanded, you know, that you need to give it and otherwise, uh, you know, action can be taken. 
you can also recommend gender sensitization okay. counseling is also what we recommend okay. uh, it can go to the extent of going into the CR of the person where we can recommend adverse remarks that need can be added debarring or denial from statutory duties that is also given you okay. know if you feel that the person is not fit for example his act is so uh, atrocious that we can't uh, trust students to them so we can even say no you will not be allowed to teach uh, or meet students for some time you know till mm. so it can be debarring denial from stat statutory duties stopping of increments and promotions reverting also okay. demotion and we can go to the extent of dismissal also. Okay. So you can lose your job for it and you can also be given something as trivial, which may look trivial when I look at dismissal, withdrawal of residential facilities. That also is, is something that uh, the committee can uh, recommend. Uh, but it, as I said, can be really a, a, a big in the form of saying that you, we no longer need your services because of your uh, behavior and the harassment that you have given. Okay. So you see the range mm. of uh, uh, recommendations that are existing uh, in, with the inquiry committee to take up. Okay. Mm. So ma'am, if I may ask, uh, what is the harshest punishment in your tenure that has been given to a person found guilty? I'm sorry, I cannot disclose okay. that because that's not within uh, the purview of, I can explain, but as I just said, I cannot give you details. Of sure, that. sure, yeah. no issues. Yeah. Uh, moving further, ma'am, uh, we would like to know that who has the authority to award the penalty among the committee members yeah. and yeah. who decides which penalty is suitable, keeping in mind, of course, the complaint and the complainant as well. Yeah, this is again a very, very important question. Uh, as, I, as you have seen, there is a lot of rigor yeah. that goes into uh, looking into the case and deciding the penalty. Mm. The penalty is imposed by the disciplinary authority and is based on the recommendations that either come from NI cash or that may come from RI cash. Okay. But it is the disciplinary authority who has the final say on it. Now, if the DA disagrees mm. with what the NI and the RI cash has said or wishes to modify the recommendations uh, that we have given, uh, whether it's uh, whoever it is, he or she can do so. Okay. But hmm. he, he or she has to record the reasons. It's not based on your, you know, whims and fancies, for hmm. example. You have to record specific reasons in writing and you have to communicate the same okay. to the committee. Okay. So you see how we respect each other. Yeah. And the rigor that goes into it. Okay. So it, you know, uh, it is really rigorously done and before imposing a penalty, hmm. a, a copy of the inquiry report okay. of RI cash or NI cash hmm. has mandatory, it's mandatory that it should be shared with both the complainant and the defendant. Okay. So you see, it's not that I do something under the table or, hmm. you know, I don't show you. No, this is what we have concluded. Here is the report for you to look at. So you get a chance hmm. to understand what you did and what the inquiry committee has decided. Okay. okay. So that's the way the penalty is awarded. So it's a transparent process. Very transparent and absolute respect for each other okay. is maintained. Okay. You know? Ma'am, uh, so let's say uh, the committee has received a complaint. So is there any duration fixed, let's say one week, one month or a certain time period uh, yes. in which uh, the case has to be resolved? Uh, excellent question, Tanvi. You uh, always have an excellent understanding of whatever uh, is given to you. It's important for us to do it as soon as possible. Okay. And uh, when I say that, that doesn't mean that we don't look into it into all the possible details. Yeah. But no delay is uh, ever, uh, I mean, this is top priority. Okay. That any uh, case that comes to us okay. needs to be seen with its full uh, merit, demerit, and uh, uh, according to the 
rules laid down mm. and the policy provisions and uh, we all put our heads together uh, in the most judicious manner and transparent as the word you just used and give uh, everybody the chance. Both are given the opportunity to say what is, uh, you know, wh wh what the act uh, really, why was it and what, what is the defense you have to give and respect is given uh, to all parties, you know. Uh, we, we don't gloss over any detail, okay. but we do it a, a, in the shortest period possible. Okay, okay. And that is why I say don't hold bar, don't hold it within you. Yeah. Because it's important uh, that we understand that we should not suppress anybody's voice. Right. Yeah. And if we are victims of harassment at workplace, mm. stand up and talk about it and share it with us. Be rest assured that uh, it will be looked into very carefully and justice will be delivered soon and the guilty will be not let loose ever, you know. That's what is our uh, commitment and that's what we've always stood for, you know, in the council uh, because this is what is required. As you said, the government of India is leaving no stone unturned to ensure that when women come, they feel safe at their workplace and they perform to the optimum without any fear or bias Absolutely. that is there. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, passing on this message, actually, because this is very important for all the women. Yeah. Uh, no matter where you're working, workplace is important and uh, you have to perform your best. So um, do not suppress and uh, say Absolutely. it out loud if there's anything uh, happening against your wish. So thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, one thing I really wanted to highlight uh, was a wonderful thing when you said that a committee together comes to a consensus. Yes. And then the decision uh, gets taken. Yes. And uh, the chairperson is a woman, be it in NIE cash or oh, RIE in absolutely. cash. So that is also a wonderful rule yeah. because uh, then women can uh, put their trust in another woman and uh, she has more faith absolutely. in that person. So yes. thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for highlighting all the salient features of NCRT policy on prevention, prohibition and redressal of sexual harassment of women at workplace. This was Professor Anupam Ahuja. I would like to thank her once again for being on this platform, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Tanvi. It was a pleasure to share. And let me again reiterate, let's not suppress our voice. If we are victims of harassment at our workplace, let's stand up and share. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to all our viewers for being a part of this program. I really think that this is going to be helpful for all the women who are working some place or the other. This is not just about NCRT, uh, but this is about every office you work in. Please be bold and uh, say it out loud. Don't uh, hold it back. So thank you. With that message, we are wrapping up this program. Take care of yourself and stay safe, stay equal. Namaskar.